Hey guys, today we are setting up our own Dropbox alternative. I have personally just grown sick and tired of constantly running out of storage space, so we're going to run something locally. In order to do this, I'm going to be using a third-party software called Nextcloud. We can install this locally on our server PC Raspberry Pi, and then in theory just connect and sync files to it across all of our devices. For the purposes of this tutorial, I am going to set this up on a Raspberry Pi running Linux. However, you can also follow along if you are on a desktop or a Mac. I'll put a link in the description down below, which has the instructions for those alternative operating systems. So with that being said, let's jump into it. I'm going to run Nextcloud in a docking container on Linux. Therefore, I'm going to use these instructions. However, if you wanted to also set this up on your Windows PC or a Mac, you can instead use these instructions, which I'll put a link to in the description down below. I'm just going to scroll down a bit till we get to our Docker Compose file. I'm going to copy the entire contents of this. We're going to remote into our Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to create a new folder called Nextcloud. We're going to create a new file for our Docker Compose file. And we're going to paste the contents in there. I'm going to just quickly change the path for our volume. So I'm going to do dot slash nextcloud and then dot slash data. That'll create the persistent volumes within the current working directory, which will be this next cloud folder, which is fine. We're going to go ahead and save that file. We're then going to open up a terminal window. We're going to navigate to our next cloud folder. We can see our Docker Compose file in there, and we're simply going to run it. We'll type in docker space compose up minus D. This will spin up our Nextcloud server. We'll give it a couple of minutes for it to finish. Our container with Nextcloud is now up and running, so let's go check it out. I'm going to minimize our remote desktop connection and open up a web browser. We're going to go to the IP address of our Raspberry Pi or server that's running Nextcloud. Now, the official documentation said to use port 443. However, that didn't work for me. Instead, I had to hit it on port 80, which is your default port. You should be greeted with a landing page that gets you to create both a local administration account as well as set up the database plus credentials. So we'll go ahead and set a username and password. And we're going to expand the storage and database. By default, it's got SQLite, but it does give you a warning suggesting that you should use a different type. I'm too lazy to go ahead and create my own database outside of this, so I'm just going to select SQLite for now and click Install. I'm only going to use this for light file transfers across multiple devices. Even though it discourages SQLite, that is the easiest option. I'll let you know how the performance actually goes towards the end of this video. Now that's going to take a bit of time. After about a minute, it refreshed to a 504. However, if I refresh the page again, we now have our login prompt. So we're going to go ahead, put in our admin username and password, click login. Cool. Looks like there are mobile apps that we can download. Once you're logged in, you're greeted with the default dashboard view. You do have files, photos, and activity in the top left-hand corner. I'm going to click on files. Looks like there's a bunch of default files here. So now the moment of truth. I'm going to download the mobile app. So head over to the Play Store and search for Nextcloud. And this is the app we want. We're going to go ahead and click install. Go ahead, open it up. Now you want to type in the server address. So for me, that is the address of my Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and log in. I'm going to give it full access to storage. And we can see the files there have synced. OK, so now at the moment of truth, we're going to share a bunch of files from my mobile to the server and we'll see if it picks it up. All right, we're going to head over to our gallery and I'm going to select a couple of videos to upload. I want to select 
quite a few. So we got nine items selected. We're going to go share, share it to Nextcloud in our mobile folder, upload. Now I had a bunch of notifications where it detected all these new photo media locations and it failed to upload a lot of my videos. I don't know if that's because Nextcloud is still setting up in the background. However, if I open the app up and go to uploads, I can see all the ones that have failed. And if I scroll down, I can see the ones that have succeeded. So if I simply click on the failed ones, it will try to redo and I can see it succeeded. So I'm going to go ahead and click to restart all of those. We can see it's uploaded nine documents. Now, I did have a bunch of failures. I'm going to put that down to the server was still initializing. We will test this out a bit more. But if I head over to my desktop, I can see the pictures that I uploaded are there on my device. If I want to save it, I can simply click the download button. It downloads it to my local computer. If we go into our test from mobile, we can see that we've transferred just under a gig worth of data. It's been a few weeks since I set this server up. We're now going to retest the file upload to make sure that we don't get any more failures like we did previously. I'm going to quickly open my gallery app and I'm going to select a bunch of photos and videos. Again, we're going to go share and I'm going to click on next cloud. Now I created a brand new folder and cleaned out all the other files. So we're going to go into YouTube demo and hit upload. Again, I got a bunch of upload failed messages. So let me show you another way we can do it. Instead of going into our gallery app and sharing from there, we're going to go directly into Nextcloud, go into the folder that we want. We're going to click the plus button and I'm going to go upload files. We're going to go into our camera folder. All right, I'm going to select a couple of videos and a few photos and go upload. That seems to have worked a lot better. Let's head back over to Nextcloud on the desktop. And if we click on files, go into our YouTube demo folder, we now have all the files that we uploaded from the mobile. It looks like that's one caveat you have to be aware of when you want to share multiple files, make sure you do it within the official Nextcloud application. Sharing externally seems to create a bunch of failures. That is pretty cool. We now have a Dropbox alternative running locally on our home network. The best part is that's going to save me a lot of money. I now don't need to go and purchase a Dropbox subscription. I'm really enjoying these self-hosted projects. If you guys have any ideas of other cool things I should check out, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.